I all in this video, let's learn about React 18 new features. So these are the features, new features, important one we need to understand and discuss. So let's get started. So the first thing is concurrency. So let's learn what is this concurrency is all about. So firstly, so let's assume this like uh, concurrency means. So if there is no concurrency, no concurrency, how it would be? Let's say if I call to Alice, okay, and uh, once I'm I'm done with talking with him and I can uh, drop out the call with Alice and then only I can start a call with Bob and then I can drop out a call with him. So this is the way we used to do with non-concurrency mode. Okay, coming to the concurrency mode, what happens? I will be talking with Alice and if the, there is an important emergency call which I receive from the Bob, then I will keep hold Alice for a while and then I will talk with Bob. And once the call with Bob is ended, then I can resume back the Alice call. So this is what happens in the concurrent mode. Okay, the same thing will apply to the React 18 concurrency rendering mode as well. So before React 18, what happens is once the rendering is started in React.js, so we can't interrupt it. We can't stop the rendering before React 18. But as React 18, now it is going to support the concurrent rendering. Now React can interrupt the rendering. It can pause the rendering. It can resume the rendering. It can abound the rendering as well. It can interrupt the rendering. So this is what it can do with the concurrent mode, concurrent rendering mode. So what does this concurrency mean? So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to talk to two people at, at the same time, at once. What it exactly means, if there are multiple calls, if there are multiple things to do, then making the right decision, choosing which call is urgent, which call is important and selecting them and talking with them is a concurrent mode. It's not like we are going to talk with all the people at once. This is all about, we are making a right decisions to whom to talk to first and making an urgent call to them and to whom he need to pause and resume back. So that decisions we need to take with the help of this concurrency mode. So because of this, what React can do is it can respond to the user interactions quickly because it can give high priority to the user interactions and it can uh, work the, like if, if, it, if some highly uh, computing rendering is going on at the back end, it can take a, a pause and then it can do the user interactions. So in, in this same example, if there is a like a chatting with Alice, uh, like call with Alice is like a rendering a highly computed task, okay? If the user clicks in the middle, so the React will take the high priority and it will allow to the user response. What user has clicked, it quickly respond back to the user once. And thereafter, it can resume back the highly computed rendering thing here. So in this way, it can uh, help the concurrency rendering mechanism. So this is all about the concurrency rendering mechanism, which was introduced in React 18. So coming to the second feature, so that is automatic patching. What does this automatic batching exactly mean? So for example, if you're trying to cook something, so if you want to cook biryani, so if you start cooking biryani, so if you find something, so some ingredient is missing, so you'll go back to the grocery store and you will get back that item. So, and then if you continue cooking and if you again find you're missing some ingredient, again, you will go back to the grocery store and you will get back some masala items, some uh, like uh, non-veg items. Again, if you remember something, the time you're cooking, if you remember something, some ingredient is missing, then you'll go back to the grocery store and you'll get back. So this is not an efficient way to do, okay? It's like you need to make a note of everything, list down all the items which you want, all the ingredients for the cooking. So then you, if you go to the grocery store at once and get all the items and cook your item. So this is the efficient way of doing the things. So this is known as a batching. So usually what happens in React, if you see what happens usually if for each and every set state, okay, for each and every individual set state, React will re-render. So instead of uh, re-rendering at each and every time like this, React should re-render only once, okay? But the challenge is how React needs to know 
when it re needs to re-render. So that is the main challenge. So how React is going to make those decisions is, for example, here is a handle click. Okay, whenever a user clicks anything, so this function would be executed, then React can make decisions that, okay, whenever a button is clicked and this button function is completed, then it can re-render all these changes at once. Fine, but whenever you do a fetch call like this, then again, React will get a challenge when it needs to re-render. So now React will again make a decision until the end of the task or micro task. It will wait for certain time. And if there is no micro task or a task is there, then it will re-render. So this is a decision it would be taken. And this batching, this automatic batching will help us to reduce the number of re-renders. So it will majorly help us to reduce the number of re-renders. There come the performance would be very fast. So that is all about this automatic batching. So coming to the third feature that is transition. So what does this transition mean exactly? So let me explain you this transition. So for example, if you feel, if you mark certain UI task, if certain UI updating state, if you mark it as transition. So it means it, this is non-urgent UI update. So you're telling to React.js that whatever is not urgent, you are marking that as a transition. So now, if you not mark that, this, this set state would be taken high priority, okay? For example, if you take a component that is a type head component, if whatever the user types, okay? The user should see what he is going to type. It means setting the user input value is an urgent re-render task. So that, that's the reason you have set it directly like this, okay? Showing what you have entered and what is a possible query to uh, enter like autofill things. So you can neglect it. I mean, you can give less priority to that. So that's the reason you, you can mark this set state as a transition. You are marking this set state as transition. So it means you're marking a non-urgent set state as a transition. By this, React will have, it can prioritize. So it can give priority to this set states first, and later on, it gives the priority to this one. So with the help of this, it optimizes the rendering things. It means in short, what we are doing is, we are marking the set states as transition, which has a less priority. It, it means non-urgent UA tasks, you should be marked as a transition like this. So this start transition you'll be getting from the React package and you need to keep the set states which has less priority or non-urgent UI tasks updates. You can keep them here so that React can take the better decisions in optimizing the rendering performance. It will give the less performance uh, to this, less priority to this, and it will give high priority to this. So in this way, React can optimize the rendering performance. Okay, now we'll be getting a uh, thought like, what is the difference between this start transition and set timeout? So the, re the two differences, so someone, you know, sometimes we may think that, yes, I can keep this set timeout also, right? So now the difference like set timeout and the start transition is like, set timeout will have compulsory a delay. It will delay, the delay is, compulsory, it, the delay is must and should. But in the start transition, it's not like that. It depends upon the tasks. It depends upon the batch re-rendering. It would be rendered, okay? So that's the first difference we need to understand. The second difference is with this set start transition, you can interrupt the things. Here you can interrupt the things, but with the set timeout, you can't interrupt the things. It will be hang, it will be uh, hard, it will halt the page. If you enter the set timeout loop, uh, the event loop, it will hard the page. You can't interrupt that set timeout. Whereas the start transition, you can interrupt the page and it will, it, this is not, there is a compulsory delay like set timeout. So that's the reason this set uh, start transition will help us help the React to take better decisions in optimizing the rendering. Fine. So coming to the last point, last uh, core concept, core feature is like suspense on the server. So earlier, so like uh, we have uh, with, uh, with React.js, we know we can make the client-side rendering and server-side rendering also possible with the help of the React. 
okay the client side rendering means everything will be thrown at the client browser the user browser and that browser is responsible to parse that uh, react js files everything into an html files to show to the user so this is a client side rendering coming to the server side rendering so everything happens at the server mission and that will throw all the html and css back to the user so this is a server side rendering fine now if if a slow component is there you you are you are implementing the server side rendering and in that there are a number of components to be loaded and if one of the component is slow okay then entire page would be loaded very slowly because this is because server side rendering means load all or nothing so this is the principle of the server side rendering you you should load all or you should load nothing so this is the principle of server side rendering so that's the reason if there is only one slow component is there then also the entire page will load very slowly so we we uh, earlier react uh, before react 18 react can't tell this uh, to the browser to the server uh, give me the slow component later give me the other components first it can't say before react 18 so now with the react 18 what react can do is it will it will wrap the slow component in suspense okay uh, like uh, while we are developing we can understand which component has a high probability uh, making the application or the page to be slowed so that component we can uh, make that uh, we can call that as a slow slow loading component and we can keep we can wrap that component in a suspense okay there come what happens if you're trying to call a uh, page from the server side rendering first what happens all the other components pages html pages would be given back first those pages would be come for the users and as you have wrapped this uh, slow loading component in the suspense it would be wait it will wait until it uh, that page is ready at the server end once it is ready then it will pop to the user again so this is what happens in sense you your entire application is not slowing down because of one of the slow component all the pages all the components came okay but only one component is wrapped with the suspense and once it is ready then you are popping that in the html again so this is all about suspense suspense on the server you are wrapping the component at the server so this significantly improves the user experience so if this is not there what happens initially if you are using the server side rendering also your page loading time is more okay but with the help of this uh, suspense you are making the slow components to render at later point of time with this the user experience improves so instead user seeing the loading symbols everywhere you can see some sort of component was came and only a part of the component is still loading so that slow component may be uh, because of a number of reasons because of fetching of data from somewhere and it is uh, ready to uh, render so that slow component may have a number of reasons to call that as a slow component it may be slow because of fetching some data uh, things but because of that the user experience should not break we, with the help of the suspense we can overcome that so these are the main react 18 new features apart from that we have a new we have a new uh, api that is so earlier we, we were doing like this like react dom dot render so render is what we are going to use and we the first parameter is a component and the second parameter is like where you are going to render your component so this is what we are going we have done before react 18 but with the react 18 we need to create a root element like a react dom dot create root you are going to create a root so this is a new api and you need to give the container here and you are going to render with this root root dot render and you need to give the component so this is what we need to do from react 18 not the just render and just rendering we need to use this create root so these are the main react 18 features which we have discussed like concurrency automatic batching transition suspense on the server each and every component we feature we have discussed is more about rendering mechanism and optimizing the rendering 
and giving a better user experience when you are using the server side rendering so these are the new features i will do a separate video in terms of writing each and every code for these and i will try to explain in detail so thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos